Hello everyone, it's Terry here. I am so glad that you're joining me today. For today's card, I am sharing this mini slimline card that I created using some products from Inkblot Shop. Let's get started. Okay, so to start off my card, I used one of my slimline dies in my stash and cut that out of white cardstock. Then going in with the Inkblot Shop Clouds and Waves stencil set, I used that to create clouds on my background. I did put some post-it tapes over the stencil just to cover up some open areas. I didn't want that to affect the background while I'm ink blending. Here I am using Distress Oxide inks and Tumble Glass and blending that in with my blending brush. So what I'm doing here is I'm starting off from the top of the cardstock and I'm using my blending brush to brush on the ink onto the cardstock. What I like to do is shift the stencil from side to side to give the clouds a little more variation. Okay, so now that the background has been blended, I'm going in with another stencil called Giant Rainbow and I'm using the clouds on the stencil. I wanted a larger cloud, so the ones that were on the Cloud and Wave stencil were a little smaller than what I needed for my card piano. So here I'm going in with my stencil and I only needed the clouds, so I went in and put post-it tape over the areas that I don't need and taped down the stencil to my surface. So what I'm doing here is I want to add some dimension onto my card panel. So I'm going in with some glitter glitz from Gina K Designs and applying that using a palette knife, making sure that I'm filling all of the areas of the stencil. If I was to do this again, I would recommend um, starting off from the bottom of the cardstock. Since I did this from the top, I had to wait a good 10 to 15 minutes for it to dry before I can continue to apply it on the rest of the card front. So if you're going to replicate this design, I would recommend starting off with the bottom of the cardstock and working your way up to the top. And a tip here, if you're using any type of gel with your stencil, you want to make sure that you rinse off your stencil and palette knife right away. Otherwise, it's going to ruin all of your materials. So while I let my card panel dry, I went in and stamped some images from the Wing and Knit stamp set onto white cardstock. For this card, I am going in with Lawn Fawn Jellyfish ink because I do plan on coloring with my Copic markers and I'm using the no line coloring technique. Okay, so now I'm going in and coloring with my Copic markers. As always, I'll go ahead and add some music here. And if you're not into coloring, I'll go ahead and post up the time above so that you can skip the coloring process. Okay, so I'll see you guys in a little bit. Okay, so I hope you enjoy the coloring process. So now I'm going in with the card panel and I'm adding more clouds to it. Now I'm actually starting from the bottom and working my way up the cardstock. You want to make sure that you wash the stencil and your palette knife and allow your card panel to properly dry. I want to say it takes about 10 to 15 minutes. So after the card panel has dried properly, I went in with one of the sentiment from the stamp set and stamp that onto my card panel. I am using Versamark ink, which is a nice sticky ink because I do plan on heat embossing this with gold embossing powder. So before I heat emboss, I like to use an anti-static powder bag and this prevents any embossing powder from sticking to areas that you don't want it to. So here I'm going in with gold embossing powder and I'm using my heat gun to heat set the sentiment. 
Okay, so for the card base, I cut down white cardstock to six and a quarter inches by six and a quarter inches, and then scored that down the middle. I then place some masking paper on one side of the card base. I'm doing this because I only want one side of the card base to get stamped on. I'm using a large background stamp, so using masking tape on one side of the card base prevents any kind of ink from marking on the back of the card base. The background stamp that I'm using today is also from Inkblot Shop, and it's called Slim Stripes Background. Okay, so now that the card base is complete, I went in with a few of the smaller stamp images from the stamp set and stamped that onto the card panel. I'm using the trailing buzzing sign on an acrylic block and I'm stamping that onto the card panel. I then went in and popped the images up with foam squares. Okay, to assemble the card, I cut down some black cardstock, a little bit larger than my card front, and I used foam tape to hear that together. I then used liquid adhesive and adhered that onto the card base. And for a little added interest, I glued down three heart embellishment onto the card panel. And there you have it. The card is now complete. I hope you enjoy this tutorial and please don't forget to thumbs up, comment, and subscribe. Until next time, I hope you have a great day. Bye bye.